Hello and welcome grade 11 students. I hope the second term is treating you well. My name is Mahesh Lal and today we're going to be doing some accounting together. In this lesson guys, we're going to be focusing on partnerships, ledger accounts, as well as the effect on the accounting equation, obviously involving partnership transactions. So hopefully you've got your pens, your pencils, your calculators in front of you and let's learn, let's learn together. Okay, so let's go for it. Right, guys, to begin, I'm going to give you a very short activity. I'm giving you match column A with column B. So let's just quickly look at the instructions. It's straightforward. I want you to match column A, which is the ledger accounts, with the description, sorry, Let's say that again. I want you to match column A, which is the ledger accounts, with the description that is given in column B. You've got a minute to do this because there's only three um, descriptions given. So let's just put that up for you. There we go, one, two, three. And you're going to match these three ledger accounts with the descriptions given in column B. So one minute, your time starts now. Okay, guys, time's up. Right, let's look at whether you've got three out of three. Quite straightforward, quite simple, so let's go through this together. Now, I often like to look at the descriptions rather than the accounts. So let's start with column B, and let's look at the very first description. Account used to calculate net profit at the end or at year end. So the account that is used to calculate net profit at year end absolutely correct. That is obviously our profit and loss account. So this should be alternate A. Right, next description. Drawn up for each partner, indicating their share of primary and final distribution, as well as their takings for the year. So in other words, guys, primary and final distribution, we all know they're talking about salary, interest on capital, as well as a bonus, if, if the partners received a bonus. Final distribution, if there's a remaining profit. And then we've got, as well as the takings for the year, takings, in this case, refers to drawings that the partners have taken for the year. Okay, so the account that shows all of this is your current account. So current account, the perfect description is B. And then finally, the last description given, C, account used to distribute net profit amongst partners. That has to be your appropriation account. So this is C. Right, so let's now look into, or let's get started with another question where we're going to hopefully draw up some of these accounts together. Okay, so I'm going to start by looking at the information first. Okay, so there we go. Right, so the information that is given to us, you are provided with information relating to S and K traders for the year ended 28th of Feb 2015. The business is owned by partners Sam and Kapish. 
the business uses a markup of 100% on cost. We given an extract from the trial balance on the 28th of Feb 2015, so an extract from the trial balance for the year end, 28th of Feb 2015. So if we can quickly go through the extract that is given, we given the capital contributed by each partner, okay? Then we given the current account for SAM on the 1st of March 2014, a credit balance of 2000 Current account for Capiche on the 1st of March 2014 is actually a debit balance of 2,500. Then drawings for SAM is unknown. So there's obviously going to be information that's going to help us calculate this amount. Then we've got drawings for Capiche, which is given to us. Remaining profit, very, very interesting. They're giving us the remaining profit, which is 35,000. Now remember guys, when we talk about remaining profit, this is when you take your net profit and you subtract the salaries that partners were entitled to for a year, as well as interest on capital for the year, of course, and also your bonus. That then gives you either a remaining profit or a remaining loss. So in this case, there's a remaining profit of 35,000 and then profit and loss, which is actually your net profit for the year is unknown. So we've got to calculate that amount as well. Right, then we've got transactions during the year, and I'm not going to go through each transaction, but we obviously given information. So transactions during the year. Okay, so if we scroll down, there's additional information that is given to us as well. Okay. Right, so let's now go through the questions and see what is required for us to complete in this particular question. Right, so our answer sheet, let's just go back to the answer sheet. Right, in our answer sheet, guys, the first question wants us to complete the following ledger accounts. Show all calculations in brackets, but I do have a separate page where we're going to show our calculations. Use the space below to show interest on capital and salaries calculation, and that's what I was talking about earlier on. Okay, calculators in front of you because you guys are going to obviously help me with this. Right, your appropriation account, your format of the appropriation account, something that you should know at this stage. Remember, appropriation is owner's equity. It is a final account, which means it's drawn up at the end of the financial year. How do we start off our appropriation account? By transferring our net profit, which comes from the profit and loss account, to appropriation. Now, Earlier on, when we looked at the information given, our profit and loss amount, in other words, our net profit was not given to us. So for now, this amount here, I'm just going to put a question mark. We don't know what our net profit is. Right, how do we go about appropriating net profit? Now remember guys, appropriate means distributing sharing. How do we go about sharing this net profit between Sam and Capiche, the two partners? So remember, we're going to appropriate the net profit as follows. We're going to give each partner the salary that he's entitled to, and remember it's a salary for 12 months, okay? We're then going to give each partner his interest on capital, again, that he's entitled to for 12 months, as well as bonus to partners, and then we're going to share our remaining profit. Okay, so let's start with the first um, appropriation of net profit in the terms of salary that is given to Sam. So on the next page, okay, we're going to show our calculations here. The salary that is given to Sam, so let's go back to our information sheet, and let's read through the information together, and then we'll do the calculation. Right, so in terms of the information that is given, the partnership agreement has made provisions for the following monthly salaries. Sam is entitled to a monthly salary of 20,000 and Capiche is entitled to a monthly salary of 25,000. During the year, however, the partners mutually agreed to decrease their salaries by 10%.
The decrease was effective from the 1st of Jan 2015. Okay, so taking this information into account, we're now going to calculate the salary that each partner is entitled to for 12 months. Got it. Okay, so let's go back to our answer sheet and let's, let's find the answer sheet. Okay, and let's do this calculation together. Right, you guys have your calculators in front of you because remember you're working with me. Right, so your salary for Sam, his monthly salary, I've just summarized, is 20,000. And remember, it decreased by 10% on the 1st of Jan 2015. So at the top, I'm going to quickly draw the financial year that you're working for, which starts on the 1st of March 2014, and it ends on the 28th of Feb 2015. Right, so in terms of this information, on the 1st of January 2015, that's when the partners decided to decrease their salary. So in terms of this information that is given, let's just change the color of the pen. For the first 10 months, okay, he's obviously going to receive 20,000. And then for the next two months, January and the month of February, for the next two months, he's going to receive a salary which is 20,000, but we're obviously going to list or decrease that by 10%. So let's do the calculation. All right, so the first 10 months, so we're going to take 20,000, and we're obviously going to multiply that by 10. So for the first 10 months, he receives 200 thousand and thereafter for the next two months okay if we take that twenty thousand let's get the calculator out so if we take twenty thousand and we decrease that by ten percent remember if you decrease it by ten percent all you've got to do is say multiply that by ninety percent so his salary his monthly salary now decreases to eighteen thousand so eighteen thousand times two, so for the next two months, his monthly salary and amount of 36,000. Okay, with me. Remember guys, you can obviously also take your 20,000, right? You can multiply that by 10%, so the decrease is 2,000. So if we take 20,000 minus 2,000, we're obviously also getting 18,000 with me. Right, so his monthly sorry, not monthly, his yearly salary, 200,000 plus 36,000. So for 12 months, annual salary, 236,000. With me, okay. Right, let's now look at the next partner. Okay, so the salary for Capiche, his monthly salary, 25,000. It decreased by 10% on the 1st of January 2015. So similar calculation, 25,000. We're going to first multiply that by 10. So for 10 months, he would be receiving or he would be entitled to 250,000. And then for the next two months, unfortunately, his salary decreases by 10%. Okay, so let's get the calculator out. 25,000 times 90%. So his new salary for the next two months, 22,500. So 22,500 times two, and that should give us, let's multiply that by two, and that gives us 45,000. Okay, so his annual salary, if we add up, it should be 295,000. Let's just quickly check that. Plus 250. Okay, and that gives us 295,000. Correct. Right, now that we've done the calculations, let's now slot this information into our ledger account. So let's go to the salary for Sam. It was 200 and, got to go back, 236,000. 
K, and then the salary for Capiche that we just calculated, which was 295,000. So let's slot that in, 295,000. Okay, All right, not difficult, guys. Straightforward. Remember, you do have your teacher with you, so if you found these calculations difficult, now's the time where you can ask the teacher to help you or to re-explain, or you can just quickly redo the calculations because we're going to take a short break, and when I come back, we will continue with this ledger account. See you in a, in a bit. Welcome back, guys. Right, let's carry on with this appropriation account. Before the break, we completed the calculations for salaries for both partners. Remember, it's annual salary, not the monthly salary. So let's now move on. Okay, we're now going to look at interest on capital and the calculations involving this particular amount. Okay, so let's go to the information first. And let's read through our additional information, and then we do the calculation together. All right, so in terms of the info that is given to me, okay, All right, back to information two. So in terms of the information, okay, information two is salary, so we're done with information two. All right, let's now look at information three. The partnership agreement also made provision for the following. Sam was entitled to an annual bonus of 15000 for running the business during the month of December. Okay, so we're going to get to that when we obviously get to bonus. Partners are entitled to interest on capital at a rate of 15% per annum. Sam increased his capital by 20000 on the 31st of August 2014, while Capiche decreased his capital by 20,000 on the 1st of January 2015. Capital changes during the year were made and recorded. Okay, very, very important, guys, because remember, sometimes the question may tell you that changes were not made or were not recorded. But in this particular case, changes made to capital were recorded. What do we mean by it was recorded? So if we go to our pre-adjustment trial balance at the beginning of this page, okay, Sam, his capital 180,000 after the change took place and Capiche 160,000 again after the change took place. In other words, these balances represent the capital balance at the end of the financial year. Got it. Right, so let's now go to the calculation and let's take this information and let's work out the interest on capital for each partner. Okay, so I'm going to use the next page because I've got space here for the actual calculation. Right, so we're going to start off with Sam his interest on capital calculation. Right, again guys, always advisable for you to draw a timeline because this helps you in terms of the actual calculation, especially when you're dealing with months and these changes. Right, 1st of March again, 2014 is obviously the beginning of the financial year. 28th of Feb, 2015, end of the financial year. Right, so I'm going to take this information and I'm now going to put this info into the timeline. So in terms of the information, Sam, his capital at the 28th of Feb 2015 is 180,000. So let's just put that in. So at the end of the year, his capital is 180,000. It did increase by 20,000 on the 31st of August and this should be 2014. So halfway during the financial year, which is the 31st of August, that's when he decided to increase his capital by 20,000. You guys with me? Right, so in terms of the information, how much of capital did Sam contribute on the 1st of March 2014? 
In other words, they're asking us to now work backwards. Remember, at the end of the year, his capital is 180,000. He did decrease, sorry, increase his capital by 20,000. So before he increased his capital, what was the capital contribution at the beginning of the financial year? Right, so if we now work backwards, 180,000 minus 20,000 at the beginning of the year, his capital contribution is 160,000. Okay, you guys with me? Always double check, 160,000, if I add 20,000, I should be getting 180,000, which tells me my calculation is correct. So using this information, let's now calculate your interest on capital. Right, so for the first half of the year, he receives interest on a capital sum of 160,000. So 160,000 times the rate was 15% times it's halfway during the financial year, 6 over 12. Okay, so that will obviously be for the first half of the year. Right, let's get our calculator out and let's do this calculation together. So 160,000 times 15%, let's clear that, so times 15% times 6 divided by 12, and for the first half of the year, he should be entitled to 12,000 in terms of interest. Okay, right, let's now look at the second half of the year. The second half of the year, guys, this is now straightforward. So the second half of the year, 31st of August until the end of February, another six months. Remember, his capital now increased to 180,000. Okay, so on 180,000 times 15% times 6 over 12, and that should give us an amount of, so let's again take, get the calculator out, all right, so 180,000 times 15% times 6 divided by 12. And for the second half of the year, he's entitled to 13,500. So let's fill that in, 13,500. So his total interest on capitals, so if we add these two amounts up, plus the 12,000, to give us 25,500. Okay, 25,500. All right, you guys with me? Okay. Okay, we've done the calculation for Sam. Now let's look at the interest on capital for Capiche. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do, let's give you two minutes so that you can do the interest on capital calculation for Capiche. Okay, All right, there's the information given to you. I want you guys to draw a timeline and I want you to try and set out the calculation similar to the calculation that I set out above. Okay, guys, your time starts now. Two minutes for you to do this calculation.
Welcome back, guys. Hopefully, you were able to do the calculation on your own. Now, you would have noticed while you were busy with the calculation, I did draw a timeline. So, in terms of the information, at the end of the year, the capital contributed by Kapish, 160,000. He then decreased his capital by 20,000, which means at the beginning of the year, if we work backwards, remember we're now adding back the 20,000, so his capital was 180,000. So in other words, guys, for the first 10 months, okay, 1st of March to the 1st of January is 10 months, we're going to calculate his interest on 180,000. So let's do that. Right, so 180,000 times 15% times 10 over 12, and that gives us, let's get the calculator out again. Okay, so 180,000 times 15% times 10 divided by 12, and that gives us 22,500. So let's fill that in, 22,500. Right, for the next two months, remember his capital now decreased by 20,000. So for the next two months, he's going to receive interest on 160,000. So 160,000 times 15% times 2 over 12, and that gives us, again, let's get the calculator out. Okay, so 160,000 times 15% times 2 divided by 12. And that gives us an amount of 4,000. Okay. Right, so if we add 4,000 plus 22,500, I'm just going to get the calculator out again. So 4,000 plus 22,500, okay, and that gives us 26,500. Okay, so in terms of the total interest on capital for both partners. Remember, interest on capital, guys, there's only one ledger account. You don't show it separately like you do for salary. So I'm going to take my 25,500, and I'm obviously now going to add my 26,500, so plus 26,500. And this is my amount that I now take to my um, ledger account. So let's get the amount and then we'll go to the ledger account. So I've already got 26,500 plus 25,500 and that gives me an amount of 52,000. Okay, you guys with me. Right, so let's enter this amount in. So 52,000. Let's go back to our ledger. Okay, so the amount, interest on capital, 52,000. Okay, right, not difficult, guys, quite straightforward, but obviously there's a bit of calculation. Please make sure that you show your calculations either in brackets or on a separate page. In this case, a page was given to us for us to show our calculation. But remember, if a page is not given to you and the calculation is quite lengthy, like we saw, please make sure you reference your calculation. Highlighter, different colored pen, whatever it may be, but make sure you guys do this. Right, so let's try to complete the next part. Bonus to partners. Right. Back to the information, there's no calculation here because this was given to us. So if we go back to information three, okay, Sam was granted an annual bonus of 15,000 for running the business during the month of December. So this amount is given to us 15,000. 
Right, so all we're going to do is fill that in. So the amount, 15,000. Okay, guys, I think it's time for another break. So again, I want you guys to look through the calculations, ask your teacher if you're finding anything difficult, and I'm going to see you guys um, after this break. Welcome back, grade 11s. Right, let's try and finish this appropriation account so we can move on to another ledger account. Right, we're coming to the end of this account. Now remember, the next part in terms of appropriation, going back to the beginning of the actual account, remember we didn't have the profit and loss amount. That amount was not given to us. So at this point, if we did have the profit and loss amount, we would calculate your remaining profit. Now remember guys, remaining profit, you would have taken profit and loss and you would have subtracted your salary your interest on capital and your bonus and that would have given you a remaining profit or a remaining loss. Now in this case that remaining profit was already given to you. So in other words this question wants us to actually again work backwards which is not difficult. It may seem a bit tricky but trust me it's really not difficult. So if we go back to our information page let's now look at the remaining profit so we can share that remaining profit amongst our partners. So what I want to do before I go to the information sheet Current account, so partner Sam, what is his share of the remaining profit? And then current account, partner Kapish. Okay, right, so let's go to our information sheet once again. And if we go further down, okay, the remaining profit and losses are shared in the ratio of 4 is to 3 between Sam and Kapish. Okay, I'm going to extend the page a bit so that I've got some place to write. Okay, there we go. Right, so let's go back to what was that remaining profit. So my remaining profit was an amount of 35,000 remaining profit. So let's share that 35,000 in the ratio that was given to us. Okay, so we're sharing it between Sam and Capiche in the ratio of 4 is to 3. Right, not difficult to do the calculation. So let's start with Sam. Okay, so we're going to take our 35,000 times. He is going to get 4 over 3, sorry, 4 plus 3 gives us 7. Okay, so let's do that calculation or, or let's write it down first and then we can do the calculation once I've written this down. So Sam, that will be his share of the remaining profit and then partner Kapish, his share will be 35,000 times, so he gets 3 over 7 in terms of that remaining profit. Right, let's get the calculator out. Okay, so let's start with Sam, 35,000, I'm going to first divide that by 7, and then I'm going to multiply that by 4, so that gives us his share is 20,000, okay, and then partner Kapish, it should be 15,000, but let's just do the calculation, so 35,000, Again, divide that by 7, times that by 3, and his share is an amount of 15,000. Right, and always double check, so 20,000 plus 15,000, I've just shared the 35,000. So let's enter this in our ledger account. Okay, so partner Sam, his share was 20,000 and partner Kapish, his share was 15,000. Okay, right, last part of this account, appropriation. So profit and loss, what is this amount? So for now, I called, uh, put a question mark, but I'm gonna now take out that question mark. Okay, there we go. And let's now calculate what is the net profit. Now remember guys, appropriation, 
once you filled in all the details, the debit side is equal to the credit side. In other words, once you share the remaining profit, then this account closes off because you've now shared the remaining profit. So in order for me to calculate what was the net profit that came from profit and loss account, all I'm doing is I'm adding up everything on the debit side. So let's do that and you guys can work with me. Okay, so we're taking 236. Just clear that, 236,000 plus 295,000 plus 52,000 plus 15,000, okay, plus, and then we had, just move that, I think it was the 20,000 and the 15,000, the figures that I just entered. Okay, and that gives us a net profit of 633,000. Okay, so let's fill that in, 633,000. And remember guys, you need to obviously show your totals on both sides of this account. 633,000 is the debit side, so the credit side should also be 633,000. In other words, the accounts have to balance. It, 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 it's been closed off, so the debit side must equal to the credit side. Okay, right, let's now move on to the next account. Okay, so the next account that they want us to complete is the current account for Sam. Now, guys, this account is not going to take me very long because I've done all the calculations already. So it's just a recap on how to draw up the current account. Now, remember, your current account owner's equity, okay, minus plus. On the credit side, whatever the partner is entitled to. So remember, your partners are entitled to salary, interest on capital, share of remaining profit, bonus. On the debit side, whatever the partner has taken from the business, what he's taken out of the business. Okay, with me. Right, so let's draw up this current account. Again, let's try and work together. We're going to start off by bringing down the opening balance for partner Sam's current account. So if we go back to our information, okay, so our trial balance. So current account for partner Sam, it's a credit balance of 2000 So let's bring down that 2000 Okay, so on the 1st of March 2014, he has a credit balance brought down of 2000 Right, at the end of the year, 28th of Feb 2015, we're looking at what he was entitled to for the last 12 months. So he's obviously entitled to a salary. Okay, partner Sam is entitled to a salary. He is entitled to interest on capital. And he's obviously also entitled to a bonus in terms of the information that was given to us. Right, so if we go back to the previous page where we did the calculations, Sam's annual salary, 236,000, so let's fill that in, 236,000. Interest on capital, so let's go back, we don't have to redo the calculation because it's done already. So interest on capital for partner Sam, was an amount of 25,500, so let's fill that in, 25,500, and then the bonus that partner Sam was entitled to in terms of the additional information was an amount of 15,000. Remember, he was the only partner that was entitled to the bonus. Okay, so we've given him what we call his primary distribution, salary, interest of on capital as well as bonus. Now let's give him his remaining profit. So let's go back to appropriation 
And remember, we calculated his remaining profit, current account SAM, his remaining profit or share in remaining profit was 20,000. So let's fill that amount in. So 20,000, which obviously came from appropriation. Okay, right. Now let's look at what he's taken out of the business. So remember guys, whatever the partner takes during a financial year is obviously the drawings that he's taken. So drawings, and remember you've got to write the name of the partner because you've got two drawings accounts in the ledger account. Um, the ledger, one for each individual partner. So drawings for the entire financial year. Okay, so let's go to our additional information that we haven't touched as yet. Uh, let's try that again. So additional information one. Okay, we haven't looked at additional information one. Right, so in terms of this information, during the year, partner Sam took the following from the business. Again, guys, whatever the partner takes from the business is obviously his drawings. Okay, right, so what did he take? He took a salary for 11 months. He took inventory at retail value for 12000 and he took stationery for 200 So let's work on this first, and then we'll get to the last part. Right, salary for 11 months. Now remember, guys, we did a calculation earlier on for his salary, okay? But this is going to be slightly different. So I'm just going to look at information two as well. So remember, his monthly salary was 20000 but remember, they did decide to decrease their salary on the 1st of January by 10%. So in terms of this calculation, your salary for 11 months, what he physically took out of the business. So we're going to take 20,000, okay, times that by 10, plus when he decreased his salary, obviously it was 18,000. Remember, he decreased it by 10%, so plus 18,000, and this is obviously only for one month, okay? Because in total, he's taken salary for 11 months. So in terms of this calculation, we should get 200,000 plus 18,000, so an amount of 218,000. Okay, so that's the physical cash that he took from the business. Then he also took inventory. Inventory is obviously another word for stock at a retail value. Retail means at a selling price of 12000 Now, this is why, guys, it's so important for you to read the information that's given right at the beginning of the exercise. Okay, let me quickly remind you. Remember, at the beginning of the exercise, they gave us the markup of 100% on cost. In other words, whenever the partner takes stock out of the business, we record this at cost price, not at selling price. So that 12,000, I'm going to now use the markup of 100% and work out the cost price, which is very straightforward. So if I take 12,000 times, 100 divided by 100 plus markup, which is also 100. So I'm going to divide that by 200. I should get the cost price of the inventory that he took out of the business, an amount of 6,000. Right, what else did he take out of the business? He took stationery worth 200 rand. Okay, so there's no calculation there. Stationery, 200 rand. And then the last part, the business's bank statements also revealed an annual insur insurance premium of 24,000. 20% of the premium is to cover the household content of Sam's holiday flat in Cape Town. So in other words, 20% on the 24,000 is for Sam's personal use to cover his flat or his holiday flat in Cape Town. So let's do that calculation. So the entire premium is 24,000. Okay, if we multiply that by 20%, okay, that should give us an amount of 
it should be 4,800. Let's just quickly check. So if we take 24,000 times 20%, that gives us 4,800. Okay, so 4,800. Right, you guys with me. Okay, so if we add these amounts up, we should get the total drawings that Sam's taken out of the business for the year. So let's add. So 4,800 plus 200 plus 6,000 plus 218. And that gives us a total of 229,000. And this is obviously his total drawings for the year. Okay, so let's go back to the answer sheet. Okay, so his drawings for the year, an amount of 229,000. Okay, you guys with me. Right, what's left for you to do as far as this account is concerned? All you need to do is balance this account, which I'm not going to do because you guys know how to balance. But remember, guys, the current account could end up with either a debit balance, debit meaning he's taken too much out of the business, or a credit balance, credit meaning he's still entitled to more from the business. Okay, right, I want to move on to the next question. Okay, so we won't, probably won't have time for this question, so let's go to the very last question. And let's see whether we will have time. We should have time to complete the last question. Right, Sam has requested you, the accountant, to show the entire amount of 24,000 in the income statement as an operating expense. Do you agree? Explain using the appropriate GAR principle. Okay, 24,000, which 24,000 are they talking about? They're obviously talking about that insurance premium. Now remember, we just looked at the insurance premium. The entire premium amounted to 24,000. However, 20% 20 of that, the 4,800, was obviously for Sam's personal use. That was drawings. Now, the question asked, do you show do you agree to show the 24,000 as an operating expense? Operating meaning as a business expense. The answer, guys, is obviously no. You can't show the entire amount as an operating expense because the affairs of the owner and of the business needs to be kept separate. And the principle that we're talking about is obviously the business entity principle, the GAP principle, business entity, where you show all the transactions involving the actual owner separately from the actual business. Okay, you guys with me. We're going to obviously touch more on this when we talk about financial statements. But for now, the answer is no, because of the business entity principle. The owner's account is kept separate, or the owner's transactions are kept separate from the business. Okay, right guys, I'm afraid that's all the time that we had. Hopefully you've learned something. Remember in accounting, the more you practice, the better you become at your, at your calculations, at completing ledger accounts. Um, so hopefully you guys are going to practice. Right, until next time, from me, Mahesh Lal, it's goodbye and God bless.